Hey everybody, and welcome back to Storytime with JRP. I'm sorry we skipped yesterday without letting you guys know, but we took a day off to launch my brand new gaming channel. If you haven't heard about that, go check it out. But anyways, let's continue. We're in chapter 30 of Lawrence Gray, Secret of the Lost Note Colony. And if you're just joining us, head back to chapter one so you don't miss any crucial details. So a brief recap of what happened last time. Let's see. So Gray ran into a brand new older version of his son, Jason, who came from an alternate timeline. And he has had different experiences that Gray has had leading up to being captured. We don't really know what yet. And um, we last left off with Jason saying that the whole situation with Gray being captured is his fault. How could it be his fault? Well, we'll find out now in Chapter 30 titled, It's All My Fault, Part 1. Gray was completely confused. I don't understand. So what discrepancies were there between your reality and mine? Jason sighed. It's more than just a discrepancy, Dad. More like two completely different timelines, Gray nodded. Okay, explain. Jason took a deep breath and began. The differences in our timeline began when you discovered Area 51 website. See, for my reality, you never found that. In fact, we continued our regular lives for the rest of my childhood. You became chief of your Hartford, Connecticut police force, where we live, and I studied at Harvard to become a historian. After I got a job as a, as a historical advisor at a nearby library, my life began to change. Maybe it was fate, or simply by chance, but during some study time, I found a book about Renoke. I became fascinated with the mystery of Renoke's disappearance. It soon became an obsession, I admit. I soon got to a point where I had to know what happened to Renoke. I couldn't help myself. I gathered a couple friends, and together we broke into the Groom Lake facility. We did it for one purpose only, the hope of finding a time machine. Our crazy idea was that, just maybe, I could take a time machine back in time to find out what happened to the colony. Well, our invasion of Area 51 was not a quiet one. Half the building knew we were there in five minutes. One by one, my friends were captured as we desperately searched for what we knew had to be there. And finally, I found it. It was the body encompassing sphere type. I pressed the time dials just before the feds caught me and I was off. I time traveled to multiple time periods until I hit the time of Mr. Folger here. Well, he told me everything, including your next clue, Dad. Unfortunately, I was unaware that one of the criminals set to be locked in the soon-to-vanish Renault colony had escaped. Even less did I know that he was standing just outside the room Folger was talking to me in. Well, as I was talking, I heard my time machine start. I ran to the window just in time to see the man using it vanish along with the machine. And Dad, he looks just like a younger version of Phil Sheldon. Oh, wow. What a huge revelation. What does that mean? Some guy that's from 1673 looks just like Phil Sheldon? What does that mean? Is it his evil twin? Is it an ancestor? Is it Phil Sheldon? Well, you'll just have to find out tomorrow, guys, all right? Well, I'll see you then.